Hello everyone, welcome to 10 Minute Physiology. In today's video, I'm going to try to explain to you the steps in the action potential in less than 10 minutes. So let's give it a go. So let's start off at the resting potential. So the resting potential is the potential at which the cell is at rest. So the, an easy definition. So the resting potential of a neuron is going to be around negative 70 millivolts. Now, if you look at this value, what you'll see is that this value of negative 70 millivolts is really close to the equilibrium potential of potassium. The equilibrium potential of potassium is going to be around negative 90 millivolts, and the equilibrium potential of sodium is going to be around the area of plus 60 millivolts. So therefore, the resting potential of the neuron is going to be much closer to potassium than sodium. And the reason why for this is because at rest, we have many more potassium channels open than sodium channels open. So therefore, the resting potential is going to reflect the equilibrium potential of potassium more than sodium. So inside the neuron, there are two big channels that we have to worry about in terms of the action potential. These are going to be the voltage-gated sodium channels and the voltage-gated potassium channels. So this is the voltage-gated sodium channel, and at rest, the voltage-gated sodium channel is going to be closed. Now, what we see here is that, as we, can, as we remember from one of my earlier videos, and if you didn't check it out, please do so, um, there are going to be four gates on the voltage-gated sodium channel. You're going to have three activation gates, which we see here, and they are called M gates, and they are going to open in response to depolarization, and they do so quickly. Also on the voltage-gated sodium channel, we have an H gate, which is not shown here, and I'm going to explain why in a little bit. And the H gate is an inactivation gate, and it opens in response to hyperpolarization, so negative membrane potentials, and it closes in response to depolarization. So therefore, what we see at rest is that all of the M gates, so the activation gates, will be closed and the H gate will be open. So therefore, at rest, the voltage-gated sodium channel is closed but not inactivated, but it's not going to be passing any current. We also have the voltage-gated potassium channel, and the voltage-gated potassium channel, as I talk about in another one of my videos, has four activation gates, and these are going to be called N gates. Now, these N gates are going to open in response to depolarization, so a positive membrane potential, but they are going to do so really slowly, much more slowly than voltage-gated sodium channels. So therefore, the voltage-gated sodium channels will open in response to depolarization before the voltage-gated potassium channels open. So what we see during rest is that the voltage-gated sodium channels will be closed but not inactivated, and the voltage-gated potassium channels will be closed. So the next phase that's really important to understand is the threshold, which we see right here. And the threshold is the membrane potential at which the action potential fires. So if you surpass the threshold voltage, which is going to be around the range of negative 55 millivolts, you will fire an action potential. So what exactly is the threshold voltage? So here is the cell membrane of a neuron. And what we see here is we have some leak channels. And the first leak channel that I'm showing you is a sodium leak channel. And the sodium leak channel is a channel that is always open and allows sodium to flow down its electrochemical gradient. And inside the neuron, sodium will always flow from the outside of the cell to the inside of the cell. And you're going to have around three sodiums flowing in through it. You're also going to have potassium leak channels, which are also always open. And potassium will be flowing down its electrochemical gradient from the inside of the cell to the outside of the cell. So what we see here is that we have four potassiums flowing out of the cell and three sodiums flowing into the cell. So therefore, the potassium current is somewhat greater than the sodium current. So therefore, we have, in a way, more potassium leaving the cell than sodium entering into it. So in order to get the cell to threshold, we have to have one type of channel, and this channel is going to be the voltage-gated sodium channel. So this is going to be the most important player in starting that action potential. 
So how do we get this open in order to start an action potential? Well, what's going to happen is that the neuron is going to receive a depolarizing stimulus in the form of a graded potential. So this graded potential will tend to come from another neuron that signals it, and we're going to talk about that in synaptic transmission. But all we have to know right now is that a positive depolarizing stimulus comes in, it opens the voltage-gated sodium channel, which then allows sodium to flow into the cell. And at this point, we have six sodiums flowing in, four potassiums flowing out. So therefore, the net inward sodium current has now surpassed the net outward potassium current, and we now have reached threshold. So what is threshold? So threshold is the um, membrane potential at which the net inward sodium current exceeds the net outward potassium current. And reaching threshold is critical in order to start an action potential because once we surpass the threshold voltage, we cause a positive feedback cycle. So what is this positive feedback cycle? So the positive feedback cycle is showed by this diagram here. So what we see here is that we have a graded depolarizing stimulus. And this is that um, stimulus that was sent by another neuron. So this graded depolarizing stimulus will come into the neuron. It's going to open voltage-gated sodium channels really quickly. The voltage-gated sodium channels are going to cause a nice inward current that will depolarize the cell. So it's going to cause depolarization. And then this depolarization will open more voltage-gated sodium channels. So therefore, we see this positive feedback loop where you see tons of voltage-gated sodium channels being opened, which will cause that upstroke. So reaching that threshold is incredibly important to start this positive feedback cycle, which is going to cause the upstroke. So this is the upstroke, and what we see in the upstroke is that the voltage-gated sodium channels are going to be opening rapidly, so all of the M gates are going to be open, so therefore we have the voltage-gated sodium channel open, passing inward negative current into the cell. And the voltage-gated potassium channels are still going to be closed. And the reason why they're still closed is due to the fact that the end gates open slowly in response to depolarization. So it's going to take a while for these voltage-gated potassium channels to open up. So therefore, during this upstroke, we have voltage-gated sodium channels rapidly opening and the voltage-gated potassium channels still closed. So let's talk a little bit about how the voltage-gated potassium channels work and their feedback mechanism. So this is a huge diagram, but let's go through it step by step. So this plus VM starts, um, uh, stands for the graded potential that we start out with. So this is that depolarizing stimulus that started that positive feedback cycle to start that action potential. So remember that that depolarizing stimulus will very quickly open voltage-gated sodium channels. These voltage-gated sodium channels will then allow sodium into the cell, which will depolarize the cell. And then this depolarization will not only open more voltage-gated sodium channels, but it will also open voltage-gated potassium channels, but it does so slowly. So when it opens voltage-gated potassium channels, it will cause a hyperpolarization, and this is because when voltage-gated potassium channels open, it allows potassium to flow out of the cell, so therefore it's taking positive charge out of the cell and hyperpolarizing the membrane. This hyperpolarization will quickly close voltage-gated sodium channels, and it will slowly close voltage-gated potassium channels. So therefore, voltage-gated sodium channels open and close quickly, and voltage-gated potassium channels open and close slowly, and they both open in response to depolarization, and they both close in response to hyperpolarization, but they do so at different speeds. So now we're at the tip of the action potential, so the tippy top of it. And what we're going to see here is that at this point, the voltage-gated sodium channels become inactivated. And the reason why has to do with these H gates. So the H gates, if you remember, if you watched my video, are inactivation gates. And these are gates that are going to close in response to depolarization, but they close really slowly. 
So therefore, it takes a really long time in order for these uh, in, in order for these gates to close. So therefore, at this point, the voltage-gated sodium channel is inactivated and no current is passing through it. Remember that in order for a channel to pass current through it, all of the gates have to be open. However, at this point, the voltage-gated potassium channels are open. And this is because, once again, those end gates of the voltage-gated potassium channel open really slowly in response to depolarization. So next we're looking at the repolarization phase. And during the repolarization phase, you'll still have your voltage-gated sodium channels be, be inactivated. And the voltage-gated potassium channels will still be open. And what's causing this, uh, re this repolarization or decrease in membrane potential is the efflux of potassium out of the cell, which is being facilitated by these voltage-gated potassium channels. So this phase is called the after hyperpolarization. And the after hyperpolarization is characterized by two things. First of all, by this point, all of the M gates on the voltage-gated sodium channel will be closed. And remember that these M gates are activation gates. They open quickly in response to depolarization and close quickly in response to hyperpolarization. However, at this point, the H gates have not opened yet because they are slow to open. And remember that the H gates, which are the inactivation gates, open in response to hyperpolarization or negative membrane potential. So it's at this point of the action potential that the voltage-gated sodium channels are both closed and inactivated. The voltage-gated potassium channels will still largely be open at this point, and this is because, once again, the end gates of the voltage-gated potassium channel close really slowly in response to hyperpolarization. Now, this point of the action potential is going to be called the absolute refractory period. Now, the absolute refractory period is a time period in the action potential where no depolarizing stimulus can cause another action potential. So if I were to send another graded potential into the cell, we could not cause an action potential. And the reason why has to do with these voltage-gated sodium channels. During this absolute refractory period, the grand majority of the voltage-gated sodium channels are going to be inactivated. And remember that the H gates, which are responsible for that inactivation, can only be opened in response to hyperpolarization. So no matter how much positive charge we shove into this neuron, it's not going to open these voltage-gated sodium channels. And if we don't open the voltage-gated sodium channels, you have no action potential. So it's during the absolute refractory period that no matter how strong a stimulus is, we cannot start an action potential. So next we're going to come to this point right here. And at this point, we see that the membrane potential is starting to come back up to the resting potential. And at this point here, what we're going to see is that the H gates are starting to open again. So therefore, you have some voltage-gated sodium channels closed. While some may still be inactivated, but you're sort of maybe going to have like a 25-75%. So 75% are closed, 25% are inactivated. That may not be true, but it's just to show a point. How, but um, the other thing that we're going to see is that during this phase, the voltage-gated potassium channels are going to be starting to close again. And that's why we actually see the, the cell membrane potential start to um, depolarize again. It's because we're closing the voltage-gated potassium channels, so therefore we're decreasing the efflux of potassium, so therefore we're making less potassium leave the cell, so therefore the cell is losing left, less positive charge. So therefore during this phase, we have some voltage-gated sodium channels being closed, some are inactivated, and the voltage-gated potassium channels are starting to close. Now this point is called the relative refractory period, and it's called the relative refractory period because um, this is the time period of the action potential where you can start an action potential, 
but it's going to require a much stronger stimulus than it would if the cell were at rest. And the reason why is because of these voltage-gated sodium channels again. Because during the relative refractory period, even though you have um, some closed, you still have a good portion of these voltage-gated sodium channels remaining inactivated. So therefore, in order to get enough voltage-gated sodium channels open, in order to reach that threshold, you have to have a stronger stimulus to get these closed ones open again. So therefore, it's at this point that we can start an action potential again, but it has to be a much stronger stimulus. And then we end off at the resting potential once again. And remember that at the resting potential, our voltage-gated sodium channels, which is shown here, are closed but not inactivated. And our voltage-gated potassium channels are closed. So that concludes the action potential. That's all I have for you today. I hope this clears up the action potential for you. It's an incredibly important concept in physiology. And if you were confused about all of these M and N gates and H gates and so forth, I have two videos in my channel that explain the voltage-gated sodium and potassium channel in much more detail. Now, if I went over 10 minutes, I'm sorry, but I think it's very important for you to understand this. Um, so I want to give a really good explanation. So I hope to see you in the next video, and I wish you all luck in your studies.